120 over 70, sister. Well done, nurse. And make sure it's charted properly, and then you make sure the patient's comfortable. Right. How's the ticker? Oh, my ticker's not bad. It's my hip. But I fell. I've lost all feeling in the side. Brought you some papers? Wrap around a bottle. No. Ah, sit down. Ah, you'll never guess who's working here. Who? Julie Song. Yeah, she's trained to be an auxiliary nurse. Pretty as a picture in the uniform. Mm. <laughs> if she plumped my pillar, I reckon I'd spark out for good. Then I'll tell her not to. No, no, no. It's worth the gamble. Fancy, don't you? Hmm? Well, keep away, or I'll soon will have your balls for an abacus. I'm surprised he's let her out to train here. Oh, I think her mother persuaded him. She was determined to do something useful. Oh, good for her. Nursing skills will come in handy before much longer. Read that, lad. Read it. The swastika is the official flag in Germany now. Bullying is catching. Nobody wants to stand up to him. <laughs> and to think I could have gone out to the rhythms of the Congo. Time's precious, Joey. Get what happiness you can while you can. Johnny, what are you doing here? Visiting. Would you please leave? Why? Johnny, don't be trying. I'm trying to learn a job. Ah, very wise. Grandpa's worried about palpitations, so you'll have to keep your hands off him. We do not practice on private patients. Not even by request. You're not ill. I will be if it's the only way of seeing you. You could uh, bandage something different each time we met. And when your mum is born? I'd come up and see my tomb. Kia <laughs> uh,
Hello. Hello? Surprise. Yes. I called to see if I could give you a lift. I just bumped into Johnny. He's visiting his grandfather. He is recovering, I hope. Yes, thank you. Well, work calls. I must be going. Bye-bye, Julie. Okay, attack. Goodbye. I can pick you up on most days if your duty ends at this time. It varies. I would wait. No, really. A taxi's more sensible. It would be no trouble. Allow me. I can be as insistent as the next man. The land has now been cleared on Yukushima. Roads and drainage have been completed. Now we need prefabricated timber houses, and we think you make the best. How many? Five thousand. Five thousand? Delivered over ten months. Can you manage that? Or are you too busy supplying the RAF up country? You're very well informed. No, I'm interested, of course, but there might be a few problems. Transportation? No. We could truck the houses in kit form from Maram to Kwantan and then load them onto our own ships. Johnny means political diplomatic problems. Oh. Sorry, Mickey. I'd have to clear it at government house. Of course. Our Japanese generals have not exactly endeared themselves to world opinion. You know, Johnny, this deal with Mickey, it's too big to risk the danger of some problem with officials. We're businessmen, we're not politicians. It's not quite as simple as that, Bershaw. Huh? You see, to supply these kits to Japan, we'd have to slow down our deliveries to the Air Force bases in Malaya. So, who is paying the best price? Johnny, I happen to know Mickey is prepared to pay 10% above the going weight for your kits. I'll think about it. Ah. Have you thought any more about my offer as a flat? Young man sometimes needs a, a private place. Yes. Yes, thank you. It's my pleasure. You just name the day, I'll make sure that I'm out. Day after tomorrow, noon till two. Just the time. I hear we are late loading for the Christmas Islands. We were waiting for a shipment of grain. Good. This contract was my father's first with the British Navy, and we have retained it ever since. Perhaps we shouldn't retain contracts for sentimental reasons. Sentimental? <laughs> British contracts were the bedrock of our business and still are. They requisitioned too many varied items in too small quantities. We had to break bulk and pay more. The price of cargo space has risen, but not our charge for transship. Kertok, your bookkeeping is sound. But think of the future. I do, Uncle, and I see the same thing. There's no fat left on the British bone. If British supremacy in Malaya is coming to an end, it will not do so without war. And war means business. Have you cleared it with government house, yeah? There's no trade embargo with Japan. 
Not officially, no. But have you? More or less. Oh, their money was good enough last time. It's your pigeon. I'm satisfied with the terms if you are. I am. Then I'll sign it. Thank you, Father. Here again, Johnny. Well, you can't get too much exercise. There we must disagree. Still, while you're sweating it out, you can't be taking any business away from Soomes. <laughs> About half past six, Julie. Come on. What for? We're going somewhere. It's dancing. Johnny, this is stupid and dangerous. We didn't really want to play tennis, did you? We'll be seen. In, before somebody else comes. In. To stop this. Better than tennis? I'm scared. Papa would kill me if he knew. What could be safer? Would we come to raffles if we had anything to hide? You're a family friend. I've got tennis elbow. And we're passing time till Paul comes to collect it. Who are you trying to convince? Well, at least they'd give us the benefit of the doubt. Once, perhaps. Then let's make the most of it. See that fella with the girl? No language problem there. <laughs> I found a place for us. What place? A friend's flat. What friend? Safe friend. We could meet there in your time off. Nobody needs to see us together. Don't be frightened. <laughs> 